Hey, that's Stefan over here at PickemRepair.com. Actually, in Super Duty Services Shop in Green Valley, Missouri, for the 6.0 Rally 2015, and conveniently, we have a truck that needs a Pickem, and I know a guy. So, if this happens to you and you want to change out your own Pickem and save yourself a couple of nickels, here's how. All you need is a flyer, vice grip, anything that squeezes. You need a 8 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, and some sort of ratchet. If you want to use Milwaukee, Milwaukee's a great solution for this, but there's others. Just, you know, just a ratchet, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and of course, a flyer, and you're good to go. So the first thing you want to do when you start, over your GPS bottle. Easier to work on an engine that's uh, that's cool, but if you got to work on one hot, that's okay, you can do that too. But just take the gas bottle, take the lid, and just slowly loosen it. Make sure there's any pressure that's in there, you want to get that out of there. Don't want it burn yourself, okay? After it all escapes, if there is any pressure, fine. Just leave it loose, put it back on, whatever you want to do. But these two capillary lines, they got to come off. So, what you do, you just squeeze them quick, slide them down, take this one. Squeeze it quick, slide it down. There we go. We're good. You just turn off. Anytime you're dealing with a rubber hose and a plastic fitting, don't yank. Turn. Save the fitting. So we're just going to take this, we're going to turn it off. There we go. Life's good. Don't allow these to bend down. They may leak. Not typically this one, but this one likes to. But we're just going to go ahead and set this off to the side. The end is pointing up. As long as it's pointing up, life is good for us. Ditto with this one. I'm going to go ahead and just put this right here. This one's just pointing up. Life is good. Won't make a mess everywhere. Then, your 8 millimeters. This degas bottle has it's got to move out of the way. There is absolutely no reason to have to drain coolant. But, just take this, 8 millimeters, off it comes, and life is good. Take this, go. No big deal. Now, if you're doing this and it's like 5 degrees outside, Care is in order because you can crack stuff and it's all bad for you. So, but so we don't have a problem. But take your nuts, stick it someplace, just out of the way, no big deal. This comes off, up, pull out, and so here's some clearance. Just go off to the side, just like that. Give you access right down there where the victim is. So let's get started. We climb up there and we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll be back in two shakes. Okay, when we have removed the degas bottle off to the side, that exposes where the thickum is. So it is on the driver's side, valve cover, towards the back. And this little doodad right here, this is what you want to pull off. Now, if you haven't yet verified if your thickum is the problem, this little military dog tag looking cover, it comes off. You've either got seven or four screws underneath there. You can take that, expose the screws, and um, check, check for voltage. There's directions for how to do that up on thickumrepair.com. But I want you to notice we got two screws right here and we got brothers back there that you can't see. So don't worry about trying to see them, just you want to get to them. So just do it, do it by feel, but it's the same thing. All four of those bad boys have to come off, so let's get it done. Here we go. Okay. So we got access here, 10 millimeter. Typically what's in the front, sometimes it's eight in the back. So we'll go ahead and take this off. Do it wherever you got to, doesn't matter. Get all fancy and you have a creeper, you know, a tall boy, whatever you can do that. But I'll try to show you the way that most folks would do it in their driveway. Because that's what that's what's about. So there we go. These little nuts. Sometimes, by the way, you, you'll have nuts like this. Um, other times you'll just have uh, flat washers. Don't worry about it. Just whatever you have, put it off to the side life is good and then you can reach to the back if you want to do what I'd like to do you just don't know what you're going to feel for sure just stick your hand back there find it not get get an idea of where you're going to be after you have an idea where you're going to be then you can put the tool back on and life is good so here we go we'll be back in just one second in an attempt to make this as realistic as possible I actually switched from the Milwaukee to just a standard quarter inch drive ratchet eight millimeter you want it to be short for the one in the back anyway as you'll see back there pretty good. Now as far as where to lean and whatever on these trucks, recognize just don't cut yourself up and don't don't lean anything with that sharp plastic. There's just no point. So if you're comfortable, you do a better job. That's what you want to do. So put it on, you know, ready to take left loose it. Slide back here. You're not going to be able to see anything. Don't stress out about it. Just reach your arm back there. 
you can feel the nuts. There we go. And out it comes. So we just, you know, a couple clicks at a time. Have a little bit of patience. This is one of the benefits of, uh, of course, the Milwaukee tool because it just goes faster. This is very functional what we're doing. It's no big deal. Uh, working on a cool engine certainly helps. Keep you from sitting in choice words your mom wouldn't be proud of. And we're going to take these off. After we do so, then what I want you to notice is that Ford's not going to give us a lot of room with this layer in here at all. And so what, uh, what you want to do is not tug. Tugging is all bad for you. Let's go ahead and um, get them off of here. And after they're off, then go ahead and we'll, we'll be back to show you what's going on. Pull up a little bit. Reach underneath. Push the plugs in further first. After you push the plugs in further first, get that all done. Then, squeeze both sides of the connector and it'll come right out. Famous freaking last words. But here, here we go. Go here, squeeze inside. The There's one. Woo! -hoo. Squeeze inside. The There's two. Two and three. Almost done. Squeeze inside. The oh, wait. Oh, oh. All right. Wait. Good times. Come on, board. Here we go. Three. Woo! -hoo. There we go. Okay. So it's out. Slide it out. People just pass the ear. Just scratch your pick them up the least. There he is. All done. Yay team. Now, what I want you to notice, somebody's been in here before. This this is not a fresh cookie jar. Look here. Somebody thought it was a great idea to use like some some no ox or something on here. Don't be doing that. No extra dielectric grease. Nothing like that on the connections. But this is the reason, this is what I want to show you right here. You see these little tangs right here, these little clips? They love to break. It's just plastic. So when you, when you squeeze those connections, you make it so that you can clear that. But the reason why it's so tight is this is soft rubber inside here and it creates a watertight seal. It's on top of the engine anyway, so we're not really worried about it. But these connections aren't going anywhere. If one or more ears are broken, don't stress out about that. A ton of them are fully broken and it still functions just fine. So, at any rate, this thicken is sadly game over. We'll just grab another one, we'll be right back. After you're going to pick them out, those are the three plugs you're going to see. Notice that the biggest one is closest to the front bumper. So, when you set the thicken back in, the replacement, what you want to make sure of is, of course, the largest plug is closest to the front bumper. What you want to do is you want to resist the urge to just start clipping these plugs in. Instead, set them all in their sockets first. After you set them all in their sockets first, then you can go ahead and squeeze them in. So when you receive a Fickham from us, you'll see that it probably looks better than your other one ever did. So maybe do yourself a favor and wash your hands before you get to this car. There's no sense in making a beautiful looking part look all nasty. So very good, here we go. But you see, here we are. We have that largest connector in the front and the two sets of connectors for the, for the injectors. So the module goes in the truck like this. Something else I want to show you guys is you see that you got studs in the front up here. This is um, this is what holds on holds on the thickum. And uh, you see that those things, they just move. So if you have a late build truck, these are just going to move, no worries. If you have an early build truck, you'll actually have a bracket here that this goes on. But this is the reason why you don't need separate dampening um, on, on the thickum on a late build truck. In addition to that though, back here, what I want you to see is that this also is dampened so it can move around nice. But all you have here is holes for those bolts to go up in. So that's what you're lining up. You're going to put it in the hole, take it out exactly the opposite of how you put the other one in, right? It's just going to slide right through here. Some folks will move the air cleaner. It's not that big of a deal to do. It will give you additional clearance. It's not necessary, but if the clearance is bothering you, go ahead and remove the air cleaner assembly. It's like two minutes of your life, no big deal. You just take off this clamp right here, and the whole assembly just comes up. So feel free to do that if you want to. But you don't have to. Slide it right down through here. We'll just pull this up a little bit, get a little bit of clearance. There we go. Mic is good. Now we're going to set up the holes, just as we talked about. So you're going to set down those posts in the front. We're going to line everything up, and after it's lined up, then, and only then, we're going to go ahead and put them in. If you're doing this, recognize, look how far the GS bottle can come up out of the way. There is no reason to fight it. 
so a second ago, my arm was in the way because this was keep up. <laughs> as long as these two are pointing up and you get the gap on, you're not going to make a mess. So don't worry about it, okay? Go ahead and move it out of the way. You get loads of access through here and you might as well make your life as easy as you possibly can. All right, here we go. All three of them are in now. Stop. Reconnect these things. Before you put these on, reconnect these things and start the truck. Verify your connections are good. There's no reason you have to get this far again. So right now, you want to get out of the truck, start the truck, verify it works, then put everything back together. Just make very sure that you reconnect these capillary lines right now to do that, and that way you're not going to make a mess. Okay? Very good. We'll be right back. Okay. So what you have now is a freshly installed pick'em. You're ready to rock and roll. The bolts tight in the front and the back. Everything's snug and life should be good. What I want you to notice is that it rocks side to side, right? You see that? A little bit of movement. I'm not sure if you can quite pick that out, but there it is. But that's because these are dampened. That is okay. As long as it's firm and as long as those connections underneath there that you can barely make out, as long as those connections click in, it is imperative that they click. I wanted to show you the bottom of the degas bottle. It's only this one connection right down here that comes in. You see it goes into a molded 90 and it goes into a T. All this assembly does move, <clears throat> but you definitely want to be careful to not break anything. So just be aware of that. Here we go. What I want you to notice is that installation is reverse of removal, right? So you just pick this up, rotate it, but you see this right here? This chain slides into a pocket underneath there. So all you do is just slide it back, slide it forward, in and get it where it belongs, get it where it wants to go. You get it where it wants to go, life is good. It just sets there. You take your two bolts, just set them in the holes, nothing special. Set them in the holes, nothing special. Take your line, you might have seen magic video editing. I moved this over up to the side through the holes here. Very convenient, why not? Just slide it back through there, life is awesome. Take your other hose line where you first set it, slide it there. Life is awesome. Don't forget to reconnect your clamps here. Just going to go ahead and take care of that quick. Rotate this one. There we go. Yay. One more step and we're all done. Just take this here. Tighten this up. Very good. So, been through the process, you saw it wasn't all that bad. By the time you've gotten this far though, hopefully you have already yanked the alternator off the truck, verified that it's functional. Step two, hopefully you yanked the batteries out, verify that they are also where they need to be. So batteries can test out about 800 cold cranking amps if you live in a northern climate, and about 700 cold cranking amps if you live in a southern climate. The best way to test batteries, hook them up to a battery charger overnight, whatever needs, get them topped off, put the best foot forward, disconnect them from everything for 12 hours. After you've disconnected them for that amount of time, they'll stabilize. Now take them in some place and get them load tested. Not just a pass-fail place, a place that can actually tell you, yes, these batteries are selling this number of full cranking amps. After you've done that, life is good. Notice also, I didn't disconnect the batteries to do this job. There's no reason to have to do that. So feel free to do it without, without disconnecting anything. All we really did, just to recap, is remove the degas bottle and slide it out of the way. That was it. So this is not a difficult job. Yes, it was inconvenient if the module wasn't so far uh, removed, but it's not that big of a deal. You can do it. If you can do an oil change, you can do this job. Now, we're talking about alternators. Recognize that alternators need to be two things. They need to be functional, and you bench test them to determine that, but they also need to be adequate. So what you want to do is with the truck at full operating temperature, we've got a digital voltmeter, and measure the voltage on one of the two batteries. I don't care which one. They have to test out above 13.3. If you test at like 1329, you know it's time to go shopping. So uh, the base alternator we recommend for any six liter application puts out at least 100 amps of hot idle. So the DC power alternator that's marketed as 185 does indeed do 100 amps, uh, but there's ones that need more than that, that can do more than that as well. It just depends on your needs. If you're plowing with this truck, if you uh, have a crazy inverter or a massive stereo, these are all things that change that number. But the short answer is everything running, 13.3 volts. That's the number to see. 
As long as you do that, you'll have many, many years of happy driving. On the alternator conversation, you recognize that by the time your battery light kicks on, it's been too late. A tremendous number of our customers become our customers one to six months after a battery event. So, if you've got more than 120,000 miles on your truck, it seems like 120 to 160,000 miles, that is the sweet spot where these alternators love to die. So if you're getting into that range, do consider just proactively replacing that alternator with a different beast. You can press the magic reset button online, start over and enjoy your truck and not sit in your garage doing nothing. Thank you.